Um, hi, I'm just going to give you a quick presentation on my shift chair, which I completed my third year of industrial design for the, um, my elective of furniture design. Um, I'll talk you through some of the design features of the chair and also the um, design approach and process that I went about to achieve the chair. Um, um, the brief for the chair was very open. I was essentially designing any piece of furniture, ideally a chair, um, and I opted to design um, an easy chair, many ways because um, I very much got interested in furniture design based on the, um, many of the iconic chairs of the 1950s and 60s which had a very striking pose so it was very important for me when designing this chair to design a chair that had a very distinctive silhouette um, something where if you saw the chair and you walked away from it and then you saw an outline of it or a shadow of it in another couple of days you would recognise it as a chair you saw the other day purely because it's just so unique and individual Um, but I also wanted to give it a sort of contemporary twist on modern sort of um, style. So I looked, started looking more playful ways to sort of to take on the easy chair. So I started to develop in, in my very first sketches looking at asymmetrical design. Um, and as that slowly developed, I realized with the asymmetrical design there's an um, opportunity to develop a duality of function, namely to have the occupant sit across the chair as opposed to standard. So with most chairs, there's this typical formal straight in, straight out. Easy chair, which works just fine, but I noticed that if I had the, if I got the, um, the asymmetrical side right, I could have a function where people could sit across from the chair. Um, and although this was a really good idea to do throw up a few um, complications, one there isn't a lot written on actual duality of use within chairs. There's a lot written on just how to design a chair that has a standard, you know, flat back, flat right. Flat seat, flat back, you know, this dimension is 400, 400, 105 degrees, 5 degrees incline, that sort of thing. But to actually design a chair, they actually move around and it's still comfortable and there's actually nothing on, which necessitates me going through quite a few models to get the design right. Which brings me onto this test rig that I built up. It's just designed out of scrap timber. As you can see, I just threw it up um, um, one day just out of cheap. Durable team. I just wanted to get the um, get the form right. It was very, very much based on a cardboard model. Um, it was a nice cardboard model that I designed, um, and then I used this and I was essentially just testing out the different angles, um, and essentially gave it to as many people as possible to get feedback on how they sat in the chair, um, where it was comfortable, how the highest felt for them, um, and actually what happened when they turned in the seat like so. And from that. Um, I got enough information to develop the frame for the final prototype, so I had to tweak about you know five degrees here, two degrees there, increase the taper, just very minute farm. All alterations all around, which allowed me to um, develop a CAD model of the actual frame of the chair itself. Um, and once I had that established, I could start on actually the legs, which in many ways the angles of the chair translate down into the legs. I'll just lift that up here. So as you can see, just to, like just trying to get the small details to carry across the hundred, the 120 degrees here is translated into the angles of the chair here and here, just to keep the um, language or, or the, the geometric language and design of the chair consistent throughout. Um, the legs themselves were actually very hard to find a proper fabricator to do. Um, fabricators generally like to work with um, f straight lines and 90 degree angles, and this chair unfortunately had none, so I had to actually source out a um, welder who works primarily on ships because they're used to working on obscure angles so that worked out well enough for that. The um, upholstery was just standard um, upholstery with a bit of down um, to increase the comfort and also let me keep the um, striking lines. So even with the soft material I was able to get the nice uh, so iconic lines which were very important for the geometric um, language of the chair. Um, red primary was chosen as the primary colour because this piece was going to exhibitions, being a prototype, and I really wanted a design that would stand out. Um, one thing, and then as the chair finally developed, a thing came out which I really wasn't expecting, which was kind of a nice feature, is that even though I had anticipated a different, um, the duality of use, I was in many ways seeing the, the ambiguity of how it was used really added to the chair, and then every single person who sits on it sits on a slightly different way. Much of the design is left to the interpretation of the user, so 
a lot of people just sit and like this and they don't even acknowledge that asymmetric design is in like a typical easy chair, whereas others will sit to lean on one side until they avoid the side altogether, which is kind of funny. And then, but whereas others will actually, you know, put their arms up and some will even just go straight to the whole hog and sit around like this. So that was essentially the design of the chair. Um, this concludes my presentation. If I were talking to a real audience, this is where I'd ask for questions.